tonight, um, let's go ahead and get started in a wide knee child's pose. And for this wide knee child's pose, we can take it a little bit further without props so that the upper half of the body is sinking more towards the ground. However, if we wanna add props to our child's pose, we can do that as well, and it'll make it a little bit more of a restorative posture tonight. So the usual, you all are regular, so I know you probably have your little stash of yoga props and a little spot nowadays, but if you have the yoga blocks, great. Some type of cushion and towels. Um, for our wide knee child's pose, a pillow or a bolster towards the front of the mat, if you want that additional support. And for my knee people, folded blankets or pillows behind the knees to take some pressure out of those knees or simply keep your hips more elevated. And opening those knees nice and wide so we can start to get right into the hips, start to stretch out the slow back. If we're taking the supported version, you might even need a blanket and a pillow. We'll slide those props a little closer towards the belly and either just rest the elbows off to the side of the props, turning the head to one side. Stack the hands one on top of each other, resting the forehead to the hands, or even wrapping the arms around and underneath the props to help release the upper back as well. Now those of us in the deeper version, meaning that we don't have props underneath us, so we're really allowing that belly, heart, and head to sink to the ground, we still do want the head to touch. So whether you're putting a prop under the forehead, stacking your hands, if the head makes contact with the ground, continue to extend those arms wide and straight, reaching those index fingers forward, spread out those fingers. So child's pose, a really nice way to decompress from our day, literally allowing our mind to become more grounded as we rest the head to the ground. So allowing the mind to drop towards the ground and settle into our mat for our practice. Make any adjustments you might need to with your clothing and your surroundings. And then we will let the weight of the body continue to sink towards the ground in the earth here. Feel that low back starting to stretch around the hips. Relax all the little muscles across the face. As we're checking in with our physical body here, acknowledging areas that we might be modifying tonight for our body. We'll hold this pose for just a couple more moments. Let's start to spread our awareness now to the rhythm of our breath. So in child's pose, our breathing might feel a little bit more um, different. It might move more to the back of the body or maybe we feel it more along the side bodies. But in our inhales, let's still fill ourselves up as much as possible. Even try to let that abdomen expand a little bit. And then on the exhales, feel that gentle contraction and the exhale allows us to let go of any tension or tightness in the body and exhale away any tension or stress that might be carrying around mentally. And let's all take one more cycle of our breath here in the pose. So on our next inhalation, really try to sip in as much fresh air as possible, filling our body up completely. And then this next exhale, really big breath out and taking the time to exhale, exhale, empty everything out. Next inhale, we'll float the head up and we'll shift our body weight back up. If you have props in front of you, just simply slide them off to the side. Draw the knees underneath the hips and we'll come right to the tabletop. Fingers are still wide, stacking those joints, pressing into the earth, floating the head in line with the spine. Do draw that low belly in to help stabilize the low back and the hips. And then let's open up those knees to get the benefit of child's pose. So we'll take our right leg straight back from the hip, tuck the toes under, shifting our weight back through that heel. Breathe it in. On the exhale, bring the knee down. 
Same thing, other side, left leg gets a big stretch to the back of that whole leg, pressing the heel towards the ground. Equal weight in both hands, breathe it in, and then exhale, bring it down. Let's re-extend the right leg behind us. A little bit more strengthening, squeeze the right side to hover the right leg parallel to the floor now. That foot is flexed. So we'll do a gentle crouching tiger to start loosening up the head. Flexing the right knee, the thigh stays parallel to the floor. The sole of the foot is now facing up to the ceiling. On the inhale, a little bit of back strengthening. You can look slightly forward and try to press the sole of the foot a little higher. On the exhale, point the toes. Sweep the right knee forward. Round the back as you draw the nose towards the knee. Inhale, strengthens the back into extension. Flex the foot, sole the foot up. Exhale, point the toes. Swing that knee forward. Round the back in between the shoulder blades. Inhale, press it up. Crouchy tiger pose. One more round. So follow one more breath in to lift up. One more exhale to pull it under. We'll meet on the inhale, pressing the sole of the foot up to the ceiling. Exhale, bring the right knee down to the ground. Now rise up on those fingertips or fists for rest, not only to decompress our wrist, but to also strengthen the forearms a little differently. We'll take a couple rounds of our cat-cow before we do that pose on the other side. Inhale, breathing, that gentle back bend. Creates length all the way up the spine. Exhale, draw the belly in, scoop down and round the back, bringing the drishti to the belly button. And remember, this area of the body is associated with the element of water. So in our cat cows tonight, you really feel like you're breathing that breath like a wave all the way up and down the spine, vertebra by vertebra. One more of each, or hanging out in one of those if it feels really nice for the back. And then we'll meet back in a neutral position, nice strong tabletop, strong arms. Stretch that left leg back, low belly pulls in, and squeeze the back side to hover the left leg parallel to the floor, foot is flexed. Bend the left knee so now the sole of the foot is facing the ceiling. And on our inhale, try to lift up a little higher, looking slightly forward. Point the toes, exhale, swing the left knee forward, round the back, draw the nose toward the knee. Inhale, strengthens the back, presses the sole of foot up, foot is flexed. Exhale, knee to nose. Two more times with your breath. And one more time. We'll meet on that inhale, pressing the sole of the foot up, looking forward. Exhale, bring the knee back down to the ground. Fingertips, fist for wrists. Inhale, gentle back bend into cow pose. Create that space between the vertebra. Exhale, scoop, tuck, and round, stretching the muscles of the back. Again, let that breath move up and down the whole length of the spine through each vertebra. And then let's inhale, come back to neutral position or whatever breath gets you there. Walk those hands about one hand's distance forward so the arms are more at an angle, tucking the toes under. On our exhale, we will bow back, drawing the hips towards the heels. The head does not need to touch. Do pop those palms up. So we're back in Hasta Banda, rounding the knuckles towards the ground. Inhale, we're gonna glide forward hovering our hips halfway between the shoulders and the knees into kneeling plank. Exhale, draw the hips back to the heels, pop the palms to give your wrists a stretch, bow the head, it doesn't need to touch. Inhale, glide forward into kneeling plank. So this pose does strengthen our upper body, but again, it's also a nice way to kind of loosen up those hips one more time. The next inhale, we'll move forward to our kneeling plank and we'll hold this tonight. So press them to the earth, feel that strength between the shoulder blades, draw that low belly in, scoop the tail. Those of us that would like, 
float those knees up into a fuller plank. And we'll try to take two cycles of breath here. Deep breath in. Exhale. One more time, big breath in. Exhale. Inhale, use the core, draw the navel in to float the hips up. Exhale, shift the weight down the backs of the legs, downward facing dog. Adjust your stance if needed. Parallel those feet. Let those heels drop behind the toes. Equal weight in the hands. Rolling those upper arm bones away from the ears. And our next inhale, let's float our heels up as high as we can under our tippy toes. Exhale, sink the right heel to the ground and bend that left knee. Big stretch for the back of the right leg. Inhale, heels up. Exhale, reverse, left heel down, right knee bends. So let's do that one more time to each side. Inhaling. Exhale, sink the heel as much as you can. Keep the hips level. Inhale. And one more time to right up. Inhale, both heels up. Stretch up those toes and the soles of the feet. Exhale, sink those heels to the ground. Hold for a breath. Inhale, look forward. If you're taking a forward fold, step the feet to the hands, the hands to the feet. If you're choosing not to forward fold tonight, you can go back to a tabletop and take some gentle cat cows. You can gradually transition yourself up to standing pose and catch up with us there. My Uttanasana people, we can release the upper half of the body, dangling the arms and the head or ragdolling hands to elbows. Prancing one knee at a time. Keep the feet and the legs nice and strong. Let's start thinking about our lower bandhas. The mula bandha is our root lock, the pelvic floor. Uddiyana bandha is that lower abdominal lock. That will also help protect the low back. You can also have those knees bent, elbows to thighs. So for tonight, thinking about this wave-like motion, let's articulate our spine to come up. So we'll all place our hands on our thighs, fingers turned in, little bend in the knees, tuck the chin to the chest, and on the inhale, roll up through the spine, one vertebra at a time. Make sure you're inhaling for being upside down. The head should be the very last thing that comes up. We'll roll our shoulders up. Exhale, release those shoulders down. Let's turn our palms forward today in Tadasana. Spread the fingers, spread the toes, stand nice and tall, float the head on the shoulders. So just by turning the palms forward does help open the chest and heart a little bit. If you need to adjust your surroundings for a little bit of balance, we'll go right into palm tree pose. On the inhale, reach those arms wide, up to the ceiling as we lift our heels up, bring the palms to touch, exhale, we'll lower it down. Let's try our palm tree pose two more times. Inhaling, big lift. Good. Exhale. One more. And then exhale, we'll lower it down to the ground. So we'll go right into our standing straddle so we can get into the backs of these legs right away. So some of us will need to readjust and find the long edge of our mat here. We'll open up in our neutral position. Now bring props into your space. So again, I'll use my chair to assist me coming up and down. Or two blocks or books about shoulder width apart. And then we'll open it back up. I'll give us all a moment here. And we want those legs uh, fairly wide. So when we extend our arms up from our shoulders, maybe the ankles are just below the wrists. And we'll start with the feet parallel, toes pointing forward. Do you draw front body to back body, continue to lift up through those lower bandhas, float the head. Now we'll bring our hands onto our hips, turning the toes in slightly so we get this internal rotation in the thighs. Avoid hyperextending the low back, but do open up the front of the heart. And then on our exhale, 
will start to tip that pelvis forward. We don't have to go all the way into the pose right away. Fire up your quads, feel like you're pulling your knees up. Maybe go about halfway. Take a breath in. And then exhale, you may continue to follow your breath into the pose this evening. Try to avoid rounding the spine. Keep the length through the front and back of the spine. Keep the energy through the four corners of each foot. So we're rounding through the mound of the big toe, inner heel, mound of the pinky toe, outer heel, so that we're not rolling in or out on our ankles. This is gonna be another inversion for some of us if we're going a little further into it. Fingertips to the prop to the floor. Continue to contract the abdominal muscles. Hands might walk between the feet, fingertips in line with the toes. Do continue to draw the shoulders away from the ears. If you're further into the posture, you may relax the head down, look between the legs, or keep that drishti right underneath the tip of the nose. That can also help with blood pressure. So we'll all try to take one more cycle of breath. Prasarita Padottadasana, standing straddle pose. And then on the inhale, we'll find our halfway lift. So we'll walk the hands forward, fingertips, lift the chest up about halfway. Make sure the legs are nice and strong, even if you bend the knees a little bit. Use the core on the exhale, one hand at a time to the hips. And then inhale, lift up to the crown of the head. Big breath in. Try to inhale even more, reaching the arms up. Bring the palms to touch. Exhale, hands to heart. So we'll stay in our wide neutral position. We extend the arms out. Um, and moving into Trikonasana. So actually, I lied. You can relax for a second because we might need to move our props to one side. So if you do have props, I already had my chair there, so I wasn't thinking about you all, but we're still facing forward. So if you want to move a block to the right-hand side of your yoga mat, feel free to do so. And then we'll come back to neutral position. Good. So legs can be just as wide. Arms will extend from the shoulders, parallel the feet to point the toes to face back forward. We'll pick up the toes of the right foot, turning the right foot to the short end of our yoga mat. So that's actually happening here. And that thigh bone, knee tracking the toes, avoid jamming the knees back, keep the legs straight and strong. Draw the right hip crease in. On the inhale, we're creating some length here. And then on our exhale, we'll windmill the arms. Now you're welcome to be an unsupported triangle pose, especially if you don't go as far into it like me and pretend like we're just leaning against an invisible wall. There is an option to put a little bit of weight on that leg, but then you must have a micro bend in your knee if you're putting any pressure with the hand whatsoever on the leg. Now if you've moved the hand down to a prop, try to just have your fingertips there so you don't release all the weight into the hand and both legs should be nice and strong. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Roll the torso, gazing down, forward or up. And we'll try to take one more breath here. So we should feel this stretch up the back of the inner, or the inner thigh and back of the right leg in and around that hip. So our next inhale is what brings up out of the pose. So if you have brought your hand down onto a prop, you need to make sure you're re-engaged. Reach up through the fingertips, bringing the arms back to parallel. Turn the right toes forward. Exhale, relax the arms for a moment. Roll the shoulders out, loosen up. If you have a prop that you want to move to one side, you can take a moment to do that mindfully. We'll open back up to neutral position. Feet parallel. Pick up the left toes, feel this action at the hip. So you're rolling that thigh bone open, knee tracks to toes. We are still trying to keep the torso open to the long edge of the yoga mat. Legs are straight but strong. Draw that left hip crease in. Extend forward on the inhale. Exhale. Ideally, finding symmetry from our first side and this side. So if it's available, we try to go into the same place that you just were. If you find that you have to go a little less, 
we should make a mental note of that so next time we practice triangle, we don't overdo it on our first side. Unsupported or left hand can come to a prop. Try not to move all your weight and energy just into the hand. Keep both feet grounded. Roll the torso forward. Drishti may be forward, down, or upwards. Nice big stretch up the inner thigh and back of the left leg. One more breath in the pose. And again, it's the inhale that pulls us up. So legs are strong, core is strong. Inhale, reach up out of the pose, arms parallel. Turn the left toes forward. Exhale, relax. Roll the shoulders up. And then heel toe or just step, step our feet together. So we'll move our props out of the way and come into a little bit more balance work. And so we're gonna do some pigeons tonight. We'll try standing pigeon tonight. Standing pigeon pose is a challenging pose. And again, with pigeons, we need to be careful with knee stuff. So I know some of you take care of your knees. So anytime we do this action of a big whoo, external rotation in the hip, we don't want to feel twerking around the knee. So it's important to keep the feet flexed. So our alternative tonight will be to practice rickshawson if we do not want to go into Dandiyamana Kapotanasana or standing pigeon, okay? So tree pose or you're following me into pigeon pose. So for standing pigeon pose, we'll also try to bring the feet and inside of the legs as close together as possible. Let's just take a nice centering breath. Inhale, reach those arms wide and overhead. Bring the palms to touch and exhale the hands to the heart. So we'll start by floating the right heel from the floor and then pick up the right toes. So this foot has to be actively flexed. And then we draw the right knee up. And you're welcome to get off that bus at any time. So this might be your bus stop. You're working into standing pigeon pose. It's external rotation, that thigh bone. So I'm crossing my right ankle above my left knee. And then I allow that right knee to fall down. So I'm in this figure four position. Choose to stay here or start to draw the hips back and down is if you were sitting in a visible chair. Now, low back people, you might not come down. This can put a lot of pressure on the low back. So just stay upright and work on your balance and your one-legged balance. Now, fuller version of this, and I haven't done this one well, and I have really tight hips, but eventually that um, calf comes parallel to the floor and you rest your forearms to the inside of the calf. And then if we want to create that movement, like the wings of a pigeon, you float the arms off beside us and you could just create some up and down movement. Good, I love the alternatives, good modifications. We're all can be different little birds tonight. <laughs> if you're down here with me, we'll bring the hands back to heart. Inhale, straighten the standing leg, rise up to the crown of the head, uncross the knee, Load it up, we're all meeting here, and we'll try to do our foot extension forward before we bear weight on it for three, two, one. Bring the foot down and just pause for a moment, Samas Titsihi, standing stillness. Even close the eyes for a moment, just observe the effects of the pose, balancing poses and sometimes get things going mentally. So just notice and observe. Let the breath return to normal. And then inhale, flutter the eyes open. Let's try the other side, float the left heel up. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, pull those toes up. So I'm bending at the knee and really have a nice actively flexed left foot. And then at that thigh bone again, I'm crossing the ankle above my standing knee, externally rotating that thigh bone so that the knee falls back open in this figure four position. Remember, tree pose, great alternative. Stay upright, just work on your balance here. Knees, low backs, or you can start to draw your sit bones back and down. This will intensify the stretch a little bit, but needs to stay active. Continue to draw the abdominals in. 
there's an option to try to bring those forearms to that inner calf. And then again, adding some wings. And even if you're more upright, you can still try to add a little bit of movement. Good. If you're here with me, we'll bring our hands back to our heart. On the inhale, we'll straighten the leg. We'll float the knee up. And then if you're still with me, we'll try to draw that foot forward. Pull the low belly in for three, two, one. Exhale, foot down, pause in Samasta Dihi. So try not to add any unnecessary movements. Lift the heart up towards the hands. Relax the shoulders from the ears. And even close the eyes for a moment to observe. Inhale, flutter the eyelids open. And exhale, relax. All right, so we are gonna to get to a little bit deeper hip stuff now um, and move, we can move, I'll do a little bit of a transition through down dog into Kapotanasana, our prone version. However, some of us won't be doing that because of knees. I'll quickly show you the alternative. I know I've shown you this before, but it's nice to have the visual. You will eventually work your way into your back, right leg up, foot actively flexed, open the thigh, crossing the ankle on the left side. Little rock here. Next option, hands thread behind the left thigh, leg can reach up. Another option is to try to reach across the shin bone and breathe there, stretching out the right hip. When we switch, you'll switch just by stretching the leg up, taking a break. So that's your modification. Those of you that want to move a little bit before we go on to our back, we're going to your back and move to pigeon from downward facing dog. We'll make our way back to the top of our yoga mat here, standing nice and tall in Tadasana. So ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, parallel those feet. Let's turn our palms forward tonight as well. And just again, feel that opening in the upper arm bones, little opening across the chest and the heart. Big breath in, let's draw a big circle, reach it overhead, drishti to thumbs for a gentle back bend. On our exhale, those of us taking forward fold, micro bend your knees, hinge from the hips, and take a moment to release the neck and shoulders. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, plant the hands. We'll take a big step back out of Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. So back people, this is where you can go onto your back, and we'll start our pigeons there. Down dog, inhale the right leg up. On the exhale, we pull the right knee forward under the body and then out behind the right wrist. So right foot is slightly active. Slide the left foot back and relax the knee and the top of the foot to the ground. Place a prop under the right hip if we need extra support. If you have the ability to bring your right shin more forward parallel to the front of your mat, and it does not cause any discomfort for the knee, you may take it there. Otherwise, we'll all try to sink the hips down towards the ground. And then as these muscles start to stretch, we might be able to come a little further down. We are holding this pose a little bit longer tonight since it's a longer hold, a deeper stretch. Sometimes backing out of the pose, is where we need to be. Remember, we don't force or push. If you start to bow the body forward, bring a prop underneath the head, flare the elbows out, or walk your hands forward off the front of your mat so that the chest and shoulders can also get a stretch here. Nice deep breaths in and out through the nose. If you notice that the jaw tends to tighten in this pose, just open the mouth and let out a nice sighing breath.
So as if you on your back, you can go through those different stages. We're gonna hold for about another 30 seconds. So those of us on our bellies, try to just let the weight of the low back and hips continue to sink further into the ground. One more breath in the pose. Those of you on the back, you'll uncross the right leg, stretch it up, bring the foot to the floor. Windshield, wipe your knees side to side, happy baby, whatever you want to do to transition. Prone pigeon people, we need to bring our weight back into our hands, tuck the back toes under, inch the knee and the foot slightly forward. It's important that we bring the weight into the arms and all the way off of our knees, lifting up before we move the leg out. And then you'll give your leg a little stretch, get the blood flowing back through that knee, stir the pot a couple times, or walk your dog heel to heel. And then we'll take it to our other side. So if you're on your back, left leg is straight up, actively flex that left foot. We'll lift our left leg up, and on the exhale, pull the knee forward under the body, and then out behind the left wrist to the long edge of the yoga mat, so it's out at about 20 degree angle. Left foot is also semi-active. The shin bone can try to move forward. Slide the right knee and foot back, so that the hips have space to lower down, relax the back foot. Add the props underneath that left thigh. Feel the breath and then follow the breath. Good. Good variations and modifications. Keep the mind within the four corners of the mat. Focus it on the rhythm of the breath. Or we can always mentally repeat a mantra, whether we're counting the mantra OM or breathing in and mentally saying, let go on the exhale. Adjust the upper body prone pigeon people, use your props. Try to also release the belly, the heart and the head if you found forward. So you find pigeon people moving through the variations if, as you like. And we have about 30 more seconds in the pose. One more breath in the pose. Use that exhale to let it all go. And then taking our time to release. Again, if you're on your back, uncross, windshield wipe knees. If we're prone, use your elbows and hands. Inch the back foot and knee slightly forward. Take the weight into the upper half of the body to float off the knees to safely stretch the leg out. And then you choose, stir the pot, pedal those heels one heel at a time. So if you are on your back, we'll want to catch up. Let's come back to child's pose. This time more traditional child's pose, keeping the feet and the knees together and sliding the hands back to the feet, bowing the head to the ground. Bigger stretch for the low back for some of us. So support the head as needed.
Bring the hands under the shoulders, tuck the chin, and again, we'll try to roll it up like a wave. Vertebra by vertebra, restacking the spine. So we are gonna come back into Malasana again today. We did this pose on Sunday, but we approached Malasana from top down. We're already on the ground, so we're gonna to try to move in the pose from the ground up. So again, for some of us, we can just shift our hips over to either side and bring the feet around. We'll want a block or some type of support behind us. So if you bring the block or two behind the sit bones, and bring the feet forward. You can press yourself up to lift up on your support and then bring the feet wide. If you're not using a prop tonight, same thing. You open your feet wide, you use your hands to lift up, toes will turn out, you find your hover, and you bring the elbows to the insides of the knees and the hands into prayer position. So I'll give us a moment here for us to figure out how to get into that. And if you're supported, you'll still get a nice stretch around those hips. Open your feet a little wider if needed. Again, if this takes pressure into the low back, wider is better. Sitting up taller is even better. Those of us that are a little further into the pose and hovering, we still wanna to try to keep the spine pretty long. Anyway, though we're opening the knees up here, elbows to knees, push your knees back into your elbows so there's some dynamic tension there. Again, we'll hold this one for a few breaths, and we had a Joni Mudra on Sunday. This is the Mudra of the womb, or of creativity and birth. And to take you in a Mudra, you bring the backs of the hands together and interweave the fingers, like the church and the steeple, and then you release the index fingers and the thumbs. And this forms the shape of the female reproductive system and often used in our prenatal yoga. So again, we can turn that mudra forward or direct the energy more towards the heart. This is a powerful pose. If you need to take a break, take a break, make your adjustment. One more breath here. And then we added this other more dynamic yoni mudra. You undo the fingers, but you keep that same shape between the index fingers and thumbs and then you extend the arms up slightly above you, gazing through that space with our intention, whatever it might be tonight. It's really powerful, especially when you're at the squatted version. Try to take one more breath in. And on the exhale, we'll release. So if you're hovering like me and you're close to the floor, you might be able to just drop your hips down to the floor. If you're up on a prop, you can carefully bring yourself off the prop. We will just step our feet slightly forward, hands behind us, and do our little windshield wipers here side to side. So we're gonna do one more pretty powerful pose and then we'll start to wind down a little bit here. This is um, a reverse tabletop with pigeon pose again. So a couple of classes ago, we were doing Purvo Tanasa and reverse plank and reverse tabletop. Same pose, but this time with an element of hip opening. Again, if it doesn't work for the knee, you will forego the hip opening element and just take reverse tabletop. So in reverse tabletop, feet are hips width apart, knees are bent up to so a little bit of space there. We bring the heels of the hands in line with the outer hips palms to the floor, fingers pointing behind us. Then you glue the top of the middle finger to the ground, pick up the palms and spin your hands around and then lean back. So my elbows are bending backwards like the legs of a bird, fingertips are pointing forward. Now this does put pressure on those wrists so we have to be mindful of that as well. Let's just try reverse tabletop so we know what the modification is. So you'll ground through the feet, you'll squeeze your backside, so tighten up those glutes, press into the earth, track your knees straight forward to your toes and try to lift up through the hips. And the head is floating in line with the spine. Try not to just let it sag backwards. Keep squeezing the backside, breathe it in. Exhale, lower the hips down. To give our wrists a break, you can stretch your legs out as well too. Flip over to the backs of the hands, gently drag those knuckles across the floor. 
Then pinch the forefingers to the thumbs, bending your fingertips to your forearms and praying mantis. Exhale, shake it up. One more time, drag, pinch and pull. So that's our modification. If you wanna add the hip element, we'll add the hip element. Or you'll just repeat reverse tabletop. Walk the feet in, heels of the hands beside the hips. Do that middle finger, flip them around your palms, all those face back. So if you're adding the um, hip element, we'll start with the right foot. I have to lean back a little bit. Cross the right ankle on top of that left thigh. So it looks just like our cradle the baby seated pigeon. Good, now you'll ground to the left foot. And one more time, then press up and lift, allowing your right knee to open. We'll just hold for a breath, so breathe it in. Exhale, bring it down, uncross the foot. One praying mantis, flip to the backs of the hands. Pinch those fingers to the thumbs, really pull it in to counter that pressure. Inhale it up. Exhale, shake it up. We'll try the other side and one more reverse tabletop. Flip the palms around, lean back, elbows bending back. Flex that left foot, cross the left ankle on top of the right thigh, lift the chest up, squeeze the back side to lift the hips up. Trying to let that knee fall open. Keep squeezing through the back. Take one more deep breath in. And exhale, lower it down. Uncross the foot. Feel free to stretch the legs out, sit up tall, flip to the backs of the hands and then pinch and pull it up. And then exhale, let it go. All right, so let's come onto our back so we can do some more stuff here for the lower half of our body. Feel free to roll to one side and walk yourself down onto the back. Or if you'd like to do a little bit of that core work, plant the soles of the feet to the front, open the knees wide, hollow out the belly, reach the fingertips forward, and we'll roll it down one vertebra at a time. Once we all get onto our back, head relaxes down, loosen things up, stretch the arms overhead, straighten the legs out, flex the feet into our long body stretch. Take a moment here to create some length and space side to side and front to back. And then on the exhale, let's float our arms down. Walk the feet in. And hug the knees into the body to massage out that low back. So we'll do our um, the little bit of a funky one that stretches out the front of the hips and the hip flexors today. So the knees are in neutral. And I'll try to verbally guide us as best as I can. So we'll cross our left ankle over our right ankle. The left hand reaches down for the right foot. So relax your feet so that you're holding onto the toes of the right foot. Now we just want to get the left foot out of the way. So float the left foot up a little bit so it's out of the way. Look at the right knee. You want that right knee to point up to the ceiling and then fall straight forward simultaneously pulling the right foot over towards the left buttock. Now, if you didn't get a hold of the foot this time, that's okay. Do your best to just drop your right knee forward. Now, energetically, we're allowing that right knee to fall towards the ground. Make sure your low back isn't hyperextending too much. Keep your low back flat to the floor. Sink the shoulders down to the ground. Now, there's a couple alternatives here. One is to stay here, and we should be feeling this up the front of the right quad and through the front of that hip. Another alternative is to take a hold of the left thigh or shin bone, gently drawing the left knee to the left shoulder as you drop the right knee to the ground. If that feels good, you wanna try another alternative. Drop the sole of the left foot to the floor, right in front of the right ankle. Now the left knee does fall open more like Baddha Konasana. 
for me, that's the most intense I can get. That's a pretty big stretch for the front of my right hip flexor here and quad. And one more element, reaching the arms overhead and taking hold of opposite elbows. You're welcome to release the pose a little bit sooner if needed or go back to any of the previous versions. Let's try to take two more deep breaths in the pose. Relax the face, the mouth, tongue and jaw. Let the exhale breathe out any tension or tightness. So to release the pose, I'm going to slide the arms back down, float the left knee back up if you're in that position, and then you need to pull the left knee back in so that we have space to carefully slide the right foot out from underneath us. Drop both feet to the floor, cactus the arms out from the shoulders, bending at the elbows, and just windshield wipe both knees side to side a couple times before we do the other side. Just let things kind of loosen up. Bring the knees up to neutral. Hug those knees into the body. Now we'll cross right ankle on top of left ankle. With the right hand, reach down and see if we can find the left foot. The left foot should be relaxed. We're taking hold more of the top of the foot and the toes. Float the right foot up just so it's out of the way. Look at the left knee. It should be pointing straight up to the ceiling. And when we exhale, we want it to fall straight forward and down to the ground, not out at an angle and drawing that left foot over to the right buttock as much as we can. Again, if you don't have the foot, forego the foot. Just drop your left knee as far forward as you can. Make sure that low back is sinking down. Gravity will stretch it out. We're feeling this now across the front of the left quad, hip and thigh. The options are take a hold of the back of the right thigh or the shin and draw the right knee to right shoulder as the left knee is sinking down to the ground. Next option, drop the right foot to the floor in front of the left ankle and allow the right knee to fall open in Baddha Konasan. And then another option is to take the arms overhead, reach for the elbows the opposite way this time, relax the throat, the shoulders, and just let gravity take over, stretching out the front of the left hip and thigh. Two more cycles of breath. To release, we'll slide the arms down, float the right knee up, draw the right knee back in, Carefully bring the left foot out. Step both feet nice and wide. Drop the elbows up from the shoulders, back to the hands towards the ground. And rock, windshield wipe your knees side to side. You can go a little slowly here. and Really let the knees sink to each side. You'll get that gentle back bend, a little arch through the low back. And the head can turn the opposite direction of the knees for a counter twist. So let's do windshield wipers one more time to each side. After we balance ourselves out, we'll float the knees and the head to neutral, draw the belly in, hug the knees in. Take the hands behind those thighs, extending both legs up to the ceiling now in waterfall pose. Point and flex the feet a couple times. Try pressing those thighs forward into the hands to help the legs straighten out. 
Take a hold of the right leg. Exhale, lower the left leg back down towards the ground. Continue to breathe here, just stretching out the right side. Walk the hands higher up to the calf muscle. Float the head up, feet flexed or pointed to deepen that hamstring stretch. Take a big breath in. And then on the exhale, relax the head down. Use your core, try to pull the left leg up. If you take care of your low back, bend your knees. Take a hold of the left leg. Lower the right leg all the way down to the ground. You're still trying to get that left leg nice and straight. Feet can be flexed or pointed. Walk the hands up to the calf muscle for a deeper stretch. And then draw the head up, nose towards the knee. Continue to draw the belly in. Big stretch for the back of the left leg. Anchor the right leg. Breathe it in. On the exhale, we lower the head down. You try to pull the right leg back up. If that's too much for the low back, slide the foot in, bend the knee first. Meeting back in waterfall pose, both legs extended up to the ceiling. Take a hold of the outer thighs. Inhale, Supta Konasana, or wide angle stretch. It's a really nice big stretch for the inner thigh and growing muscles now. Move the hands to the inside and massage those muscles to deepen that stretch. Roll the ankles, flare the feet. One more big breath in. On this exhale, bend the knees, reaching the hands up to the toes or the feet for our happy baby pose. Continue to try to let the low back sink into the ground. Knees are nice and wide. Add a little rock side to side if that feels good for the low back. So another big deep hip stretch. Alternatively, try to re-extend one straight leg out at a time. One more breath in. On the exhale, release the feet, squeeze the knees together. And we'll take a final spinal twist here. So knees together, feet are parallel to each other. Extend the arms up from the shoulders, palms down. Exhale, lowering the knees over to the right. Add props underneath the knees or thighs as needed. Sink the left shoulder back down into the ground. Place the right hand on top of that right thigh to deepen the twist. Turn the head to the left to counter twist for the neck. Closing the eyes, slowing the breathing down and taking some nice big breaths to unwind, wring everything out. Our next inhale will guide us out of the twist, bringing the head and the knees back up to center. If you feel like you need to do a little scooch or adjustment for, for the other side, do so. And then exhale, drop the knees to the left. Sink the right shoulder to the ground. Left hand on top near thigh to deepen the twist. Head turns to the right to counter twist the neck. Close the eyes. Smooth, even breaths in and out through the nose. <clears throat> And then next inhale, again, we'll release the head and the knees back to neutral. Exhale, try to draw those arms across the shin bones, taking a hold of opposite elbows or wrists, floating the nose to the knees, giving our body a nice big squeeze. 
big breath in. And on the exhale, let everything go. We're coming to our final relaxation this evening. So if you have your pillows, your blankets, cushions that you want to take underneath the back, the head, or the legs, please add those things now. If you have eye coverings, add those as well to help the mind and the eyes relax more quickly. I will guide us through a little bit more relaxation. Give us several moments of peace and quiet. And then use the singing bowl to bring us out. So once we get into position, loosen things up, adjust your surroundings, getting as comfortable as possible. The arm bones can roll open beside the torso, palms up with the fingertips curling in naturally. Positioning the legs accordingly, if you wanna keep your knees bent up for the low back, or open them into Baddha Konasana, or just let them slide open, nice and wide, feet flopping open in Shavasana. Start to feel the whole weight of the body sink a little further into the ground. Noticing all the contact points with the body and the floor and relaxing those points 10% more. Smooth the skin of the forehead, the brow. Relax the eyebrow center. Let the eyes sink deep into the sockets. Poof the cheeks with air, wiggle out the mouth. And then with the lips softly touching, release the tongue and the lower jaw to gravity. Relax the throat. Feel the weight of the shoulders, the elbows, and the backs of the hands sink into the ground. And relax all the way around the torso, the rib cage. Soften the belly. Let that low back sink into the ground. And then notice and feel the bones of the pelvis the area where the thigh bone connects into the hip socket. Soften in all the muscles around the area that wrap around the buttock, the hips, the thighs. And just like water, we let that relaxation trickle all the way down the legs, through the knees, into the ankles, the feet, the toes. Relaxing the whole body. If the mind wanders, gently bring it back to the peaceful breath. Giving ourselves just one more moment of today to let go, to feel a sense of surrender and sink into your Shavasana.
We'll slowly start to come back to the breath. And breathing life into the body as we wake up our toes, our fingertips, rock the head side to side. If the knees are open in Baddha Konasa and float the knees up. And let's all try to stretch our legs out down the middle of our mat. Inhaling those arms back overhead into our long body stretch. Giving our right side a little bit longer of a stretch. Giving the left side a little bit longer of a stretch. And then one more big breath in to stretch everything out from the fingertips to the toes. Exhale, float those arms down. Walk the feet in. And depending where we are with our props, you can either hug your knees and massage the back or just float them up a little bit. Right arm falls beside the head. We roll all the way over onto our side, pausing for a moment and sleeping baby pose. And then we'll keep the eyes closed or soft, press down into the ground. And bringing the body up, we will visit any comfortable seated posture. Sitting up nice and tall on our sit bones and being mindful of our surroundings. And take just a couple more breaths together. So sit up nice and tall for the crown of the head. Let's extend those arms out to the sides of the body, palms up. Let's take another big breath in, float those arms up and gather up all the stuff that we need for the rest of our evening. Turn those palms out, take an even bigger breath out as we float the fingertips to the floor and let go of all that other junk we do not need this evening. And again, inhale, breathing, arms up. Bring the palms to touch, exhale, hands to heart, humbly bowing the head down to the heart to honor and thank ourselves, our bodies, each other, and remembering to be grateful to anyone else that made it possible for us to connect and practice our yoga together today. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti He, Om, Peace, Peace, Peace.